All right. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, Sean Kelly, uh, Principal Engineer at Broadcom. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about some of the AI services that we can run on our platform. Uh, before we get into that, though, maybe just ask, you know, why are customers running these type of workloads on our platform? Well, Right now, we're seeing about 50% uh, of projects make it from pilot to production. And the reason for that is there's really a ton of complexity when it comes to these, uh, these environments, these AI environments. On the left side, we have all of the uh, data science pieces, configuration, data collection, feature extraction, and others that our data scientists have to contend with. And then on the right side, we have the core IT, the infrastructure domain, so serving out the infrastructure, monitoring that infrastructure, uh, managing the tools and the resources themselves. And of course, you saw it right in the middle there. We have the, the algorithms, the models, right? It really turns out that that's a very small piece of the puzzle, especially when you're trying to go to full-scale production. And so the reason people are running on our platform is because we solve a lot of these infrastructure problems right off the bat. We've been doing this for years. So some examples. Agility, right? The ability to reconfigure and reallocate our hardware uh, in just minutes compared to something that would take hours or sometimes days on bare metal. Moving workloads without interruption. If you have to do maintenance on a server or if you just want to reconfigure things to balance out the workloads in your data center, we can do that, migrating a workload from one server to another. Uh, avoiding bare metal silos, right? There's nothing worse than having a whole cluster of compute, sometimes very powerful compute with GPUs, sitting at idle because it's, it's uh, assigned to a single project or a single team, and other projects and teams within the organization can't get uh, use of those uh, resources. So scale matters as well, right? We want to be able to right-size our compute from the beginning, right? This means uh, carving it up in a way that we can't really do on bare metal so that we can get the most efficient use out of our resources, and then scaling it up quickly to meet demand. Or sometimes that means scaling back down and releasing those compute resources to other workloads that can take advantage of them. Lifecycle management, right? That matters too. So streamlining our maintenance, our upgrades, our patches, uh, increasing our reliability and uptime. We've been doing this for decades with enterprise workloads, and the same approach that we're taking there works for AI as well. And of course, privacy and security matters too, right? Matters all the time, but it's especially important when it comes to AI workloads with the data that we're touching here. So, go ahead. Yeah, so it's just, I know this might be a touchy conversation, but VCF is not the only way that you've done AI for customers, right? It's not the only platform. Yeah, is it so, just the only one y'all are going to support going forward? So, when we talk about VCF, we're talking about a set of products, right? So, this includes the SDVC Manager, vSphere, NSX, vSPAN, vSAN, and then uh, the ARIA suite that sits on top of that. Uh, that is the direction we're moving, especially for our strategic customers. That doesn't mean that vSphere will go away. We still, we still have it as a product, but both of them are using that underlying vSphere technology. Uh, Let me be more specific okay. with my question. How many of your customers were using VCF for AI? And how many of them were just using vSphere? Well, a growing number for both. I don't have the stats today to be able to to be able to dive into that, but we see it increasing on both platforms. Okay. And anyone who is using VCF is, by definition, using vSAN because that's the underlying piece within VCF. Does that make sense? That's a good question. Yeah, I know you want to get into numbers. I just, I just don't, I just don't have them. Well, then I just have a problem with saying it's a proven thing. When what if you're using vSphere and external storage? Because that seems like that's also a proven. Thing. Well, okay, so let's let's dive into that a little bit. We are using external storage with VCF, right? So a lot of people assume that vSAN is the only way to deploy it. For these types of workloads, you would leverage NFS in order to, you know, hold your data, in order to hold your data. Yeah, that approach uh, completely works. Uh, performance, right? So performance matters as well. This one comes up a lot. There's an assumption that and I guess it's kind of intuitive that when you're adding an extra layer in the hypervisor, that that extra layer would cause some sort of additional latency. Um, but what we found is that's actually not the case. In fact, that's because we've been working on the performance of our hypervisor, specifically our scheduler, 
for two decades now, right? And so we're able, with the advancements in our scheduler, to be able to uh, stay on par with bare metal, right? And so when we say, you know, bare metal speed, if you look at the, the orange line there, 1.0 is bare metal. And we find that when we benchmark this, we're within plus or minus 2% on AI workloads. Now, if you look at the last two, you'll see that in some cases, we're actually faster than that. Uh, and again, this is due to efficiencies in our scheduler. Here, we're at 5% uh, faster than bare metal in these use cases. On that, is that when you're passing through the entire GPU, is there any additional overhead if you're slicing up those GPUs and sharing them across multiple virtual machines? Yeah, you know, we, I wish I had the, the graph for that. We, we don't really see much, yeah. right? Uh, NVIDIA did exactly that set of benchmarks uh, for scaling it out, and it's pretty much a straight line. Oh, cool. nice. Okay, so with you know, the capabilities in, in uh, VCF and the performance that it brings, this is kind of the base of our VMware private AI, right? And as I think was covered John, in an earlier talk. Uh, NVIDIA's got, and I'm not sure what the terminology is, but they've got their own um, protocols for data transfer and, and uh, within like a DCX solution or something like that. I'm not sure it's iLink or something of that nature. Does VMware support those sorts of solutions for the NVIDIA private AI foundation solution? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you're talking about NVLink, then yes. NVLink allows us to connect multiple GPUs directly to each other so you don't have to round trip to the CPU and the memory. And yes, VMware does support those uh, in a couple different configurations. There's NV switch, which would be uh, embedded in the motherboard itself, or there's the NVLink bridges where you can take two GPUs that are right next to each other in PCI slots and bridge them together with uh, you know these little physical uh, pieces that they have. Exactly, very similar to DGX. All right, so private AI, uh, we're taking an architectural approach, trying to balance the business gains of AI with the privacy and the compliance needs of your organization. And as we approach this, we're really trying to uh, you know, embrace our entire open ecosystem partners. There's a lot here, uh, and we can't go into all of them, but I want to start with just a couple to show what we're doing. And the first one is private AI with Ray. And so this is interesting because in a, in a previous talk, Ray brought up Ray, <laughs> and... Uh, Sorry. Uh, and so now we get to talk about it a little bit. So for those of you who don't know, this is a, an open source uh, framework that makes it really, really easy to scale up uh, Python workloads, AI workloads. Uh, it's used by a lot of uh, popular companies. OpenAI uses it, Uber uses it, LinkedIn uses it, and others. And so here's what it looks like when we're leveraging it in vSphere, right? We're implementing it as a, as a plugin. And what we have here on the, on the left side is a, a Ray head node. And on the right side, you can see those Raylets, which are effectively worker nodes. And the way this works is uh, from the Ray head node, the autoscaler auto makes a uh, request uh, for compute to the distributed resource scheduler. That's within vSphere. Uh, and that distributed resource scheduler will uh, deploy compute from the resource pool that is predefined. That compute will take the, the form of these Raylets uh, or worker nodes, which are then orchestrated by the Ray head node. So a Raylet would be a VM. That's what it would look like on the vSphere side. A VM? Yeah. So is it, yes. In fact, let's actually, let's take a look at what it would look like on the vSphere side. Okay, so here we have a vSphere environment. And uh, you know, down here, there's a compute cluster. This compute cluster consists of three hosts. And there's also a resource pool uh, labeled Ray here. In addition to that, we have a virtual machine. And we'll use this to do those instant clothes that I think were covered in another, uh, another talk. So here we're running a Ray up command. And very quickly, we're spinning up both a head node and a single worker node. And we're done. There's the three seconds you were looking for before, right? Um, so compare that to something like 30 seconds if you were doing this in the public cloud or maybe five minutes or so on bare metal. Now that we're in Ray, we've, we've gone to the head node, we can take another look at the, the cluster. And uh, there's both the head and the worker nodes. 
Okay, so now we're in a Python application. We want to do some training uh, on a breast cancer uh, use case, uh, breast cancer detection, I should say. But this time we want two workers with two CPUs each, right? We had only provisioned one worker the first time. So it's really easy. We're just uh, copying and pasting the address we're given to to the, uh, the head node there. And we're running the job. Now, if we go back to vSphere, we can see what's happening in the background. If we go to our tasks, right now you can see that instant clone happening, right? This is why it takes only a couple seconds to spin it up. We're cloning the VMs that are already there. And now we have one head <coughs> node and a couple of worker nodes. Can I just go into Python code and replace CPU with GPU and then launch it again? Would that work or is that a different approach for GPUs? I think that would work, yeah, that would work. Uh, it's, it's defined, to, typically you do it, you define it in a, in a YAML file, as, but right. yes. Yeah, I mean, the idea is if a customer today is TPU only, and they see the other You can do both, yes, yeah, you can do, you can leverage both, absolutely. So there's no recoding from, uh, except for TPU to GPU from- Correct, perspective. correct. And we saw that the- uh, the uh, Wouldn't the models- Workload finished and is completed. Specification for GPU or CPU or right, but I presume that under Ray they have something like Care as a PyTorch that, that does, does all that sort of automatically. But yes, different models. All right, that covers Ray. Any questions before moving on? Licensing difference in licensing Ray for CPUs versus GPUs. Well, potentially. I mean, G your GPUs are going to be licensed through NVIDIA. Uh, so there would be some potential additional licensing there, okay. um, as opposed to CPUs, which you know are you're already going to have in your servers. Uh, from a Ray point of view, I don't you know this is an open source plugin. So as far as licensing is concerned, it's it's an NVIDIA thing versus when it comes to the GPUs, the NVIDIA handles their own licensing. We don't do that. Okay, moving on. VMware Private Eye with uh, IBM. So it's interesting. Uh, this actually comes up quite a bit. I just had a customer conversation yesterday. Uh, one of my customers is running IBM Watson X. They really like it. Uh, obviously, that's out in the public cloud. And so the challenge is that they have data uh, that, for compliance reasons, that they can't put in the public cloud. And so they were when they saw this first announced at uh, VMware Explore, they um, they were pretty excited about it, right? So the idea here is that we can take IBM Watson, the entire data platform, and pair that up with VMware Cloud Foundation to bring you effectively IBM Watson on premises for the. And here's what it looks like from a stack point of view. At the bottom, we have the compute. And then the next layer, we have VMware Cloud Foundation with all the goodness that, that brings, much of which I covered uh, just a few minutes ago. But also from a security point of view, secure boot, identity and access management, and so forth. On top of that, we have OpenShift, right? And I think some people get a little bit surprised to see OpenShift on our platform because we have VMware Tanzu and then they do compete. Um, but actually, we've been running OpenShift on our platform for years now. Right, it runs really well on VMware. Uh, I think it's, I don't know if, you know, what the proportions are of, you know, on bare metal compared to VMware, but there's a lot of OpenShift running on, on VMware right now. And then on top of that, we deploy uh, Watson X, right? And, uh, you know, that platform is as you would expect, similar to the cloud. And then models like Granite, Flan, Starcoder, Llama 2, et cetera. So when it comes to the uh, privacy and security pieces, diving a little bit into the different components here, you know, we have vSphere, as I just mentioned, uh, secure boot, virtual TPM, vSphere trust authority, VM encryption, and more, right? All of the security that's been developed in vSphere for years now. We also leverage microsegmentation from NSX, right? This is the ability to effectively take a virtual machine and wrap protections around it so that uh, we have all the context within the virtual machine. The, the firewall isn't inside the virtual machine. It's not in the guest OS. It sits outside where it's, where it's close to the virtual machine, uh, but not in a place where if someone were able to get into that VM, they could shut it down. And then it's not enough to protect the infrastructure pieces, right? 
so Watson X is also delivering their protections. They have uh, spent a lot of time on the governance and ensuring that they're addressing privacy and compliance as well. So are you guys doing anything with Watson X governance down to the infrastructure layer? We, you know, earlier we had uh, conversations around inspector databases, et cetera, kind of providing that end-to-end -end security point from uh, kind of Watson X as a provider into the data, database layer? I would, I would say it is, uh, as more of a layered approach, right? There's multiple different layers there, mm -hmm. and we're trying to protect at each one of those layers. Okay, and then with Watson S, uh, Watson X, we also have uh, a lot of choice when it comes to the models that you're deploying, right? There's the proprietary models like Granite, which is a foundation model. They also have Slate as another foundation model. Uh, open source models uh, are also available, so all the usual suspects there, uh, in, including things like Flan and GP GPT. And then 30 third party models, uh, Llama 2, Starcoder, and so forth, all running on the platform. So what kind of use cases are we enabling with this? Well, code generation is one that I think comes up a fair amount, right? Coders are in pretty short demand, uh, and we want to do everything we can to you know, accelerate them, accelerate their work. And so uh, code generation helps with that. Contact center resolution. Right, I know at VMware we are always having a lot of people coming in, uh, you know, for support and wanting that to be addressed as quickly as possible. So this allows us to get them to either the right person as quickly as possible, or allows them allows our team to be able to get the right answer to them as quickly as possible. Uh, IT IT operations with, automation. Don, I'm not too familiar with Watson X. Is it something similar to something like uh, Cloud SageMaker or Vertex or, or things of that nature? I mean. AWS or, or Google Cloud. Is that what it is? It's a framework for running AI? Yeah, yeah, I would say it's more than a framework. It's an entire AI platform. Really, that's that's so but like, but like those, it is AI AI foundation. AI. And it's a it's a replacement for an NVIDIA's private AI foundation then? I don't know if I'd put it as a replacement for that, but yes, I could see those competing. It is a cloud, it is a service offering in the cloud, typically, and then now we're bringing it on premises uh, on top of Cloud Foundation. Okay, so, thanks. Yes, I would, I would say that, yes. All right. Um, but I'll let Chris weigh in and see if he has some additional thoughts there. Yeah, we, we talk to a lot of customers about this, and I would say that uh, customers have all use cases. They have data that they're fine being in the cloud service, but they have data that's also on-prem. So IBM is bringing customers to us to work with us for the on-prem use case. Nice. So it's really, it's a hybrid approach for the customers and for IBM. Okay. So if customers want OpenShift and Watson X integration, but they want that on-prem, then BCF is with, a, with the additional sauce of private yeah, AI. Yeah, I can give you a customer, Keith. So uh, one of our customers is an oil and gas company. They've, they've already been using the Watson X cloud service, but they want to bring those services to their oil rig. So that's an on-prem use case where they're already running BCF. Okay. And then uh, advanced information retrieval, right? Uh, documented search policy. We, we see these uh, retrieval augmented generation use cases becoming more and more popular, right? The ability to marry up data, often in a vector database, with the intelligence of AI in order to get the right answers with current information and a lot of times the guardrails are around what we want to uh, respond to. Uh, I know we just kind of touched the service here uh, due to our limited time, but if you want to find out more information, uh, this will take you to one of our blogs that covers uh, private AI with IBM Watson X.